Hello all, welcome to OrtTrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about Oracle process automation and which is the functionality which is available in Gen3. And earlier it was called as process cloud service. And yeah, let's get into the agenda. So what is BPM, BPMN, types of BPMs you'll come across in the industry. And some of the industry leaders in the process automation tools and what is the difference between Oracle SOA BPM versus Oracle OPA and then the product offerings and a sample demo. So now the basic thing is what is BPM and why do we generally use it in the business world? So BPM is kind of an application that allows you to automate the business process. So in general, in any organized business, the information flows in a process manner and it follows a specific approval mechanism, information sharing. Okay, and in those kind of scenarios, this particular tools helps the industry to automate the processes and it manages the business in a very effective manner. Okay, and so like uh, when you are designing the processes, you know, you need to, when you are designing something, you need to have a, a specific notation wherein it is generic and everyone can understand it. And as per the Oracle, I mean, not just Oracle, as per the industry, standard notation, there is something called business process model notation and in which it provides a specific graphical notation and it is generic across all the BPM products which you come across. If at all, if your product is following BPM notation and by, the, by that specific symbol, you can say a graphical notation, you can understand what is that particular process will do, okay? This is what a BPM is. So BPM is generally a product and BPM is a notation of that particular product. And there are a couple of types of BPM products that come across in the industry. And more or less, it has a specific functionality in a specific industry. And the high level, the first one is integration centric BPM, wherein it's like communication between two integrations. Like when you say OIC, generally it it is uh, typically used for the purpose of, you know, like uh, integrating heterogeneous systems, right? The, the communication happens between different systems. And when you come to human centric BPM, wherein, a manual intervention of the user is required. It's like mostly an approval mechanism or maybe information sharing mechanism where the manual process is involved. Coming to the document centric, it's more of you know, a document approval mechanism or maybe like a contract approvals you generally come across as a document centric BPM. And based on the requirement, of course, you have to use the specific product which is there in the market. And some of the industry leaders in the BPM market, so we have Pega Systems, IBM, Microsoft, ServiceNow, and Oracle, Oracle Process Automation, Salesforce. So these are the top industry leaders in the BPM industry. Now, in earlier, like, see, is it is it OPA new product? Not really. Since from the past five couple of years, we have a Oracle SOA BPM, which was an on-premise approval mechanism, and now. Later, we have a process cloud service. Again, it was replaced with OPA. So Oracle process automation, I can say it's like a, a pass solution from the Oracle. And in, unlike the SOA BPM, which was on-premise, this OPA is a, a cloud-based solution. And of course, the tooling is different. And it also has a very uh, a good amount of integration with other kind of products. So this is a difference between a SOA BPM as well as OPA. And now, this particular process automation from the Oracle and what is the way it is offered? So there are three ways it is providing the offering. I'll start with the last one. Generally, we know that like a Oracle Integration Cloud has an offering of ICS, VPCS, and earlier it was called VPC, uh, PCS. Now it is called as OPA. So in the last option, the one which is called Oracle, like enabled with Integration 3. So it means that in the Gen 3 version of your Oracle Integration Cloud, you have ICS, VPCS, as well as OPA. And now the other scenario, the second one, paired with Fusion-based cloud application, if at all, if at all if the client is having license of Fusion ERP, they can also subscribe to license of OPA. And the last, the first one, individual Oracle cloud infrastructure surface, it's like independent, independent OPA license. So generally, this this may not be that much useful because having just OPA license may not be that much effective for a client until unless they already have all the products from different vendors. Maybe if they just want only approval mechanism, they can prefer this. But if at all, if they have the Gen3, Gen3, the best option is the last one, enabled with Gen3. Or let us say if they have Fusion ERP and uh, for other things which they already have another solutions, maybe they can go with the second option. Okay. Now, like how do we start with, right? As a developer, like uh, what is the tool? How do you navigate? What are the functionalities which we have? 
basically when you log into the store there are two particular uh, areas you have to understand like uh, once you start creating a process like uh, nothing but in the designer as a developer we create the processes and then if at all if you want to test it you have to test it in the workspace area so this is how you know like oracle process automation works out and yeah so this is a login screen like once you log into the oracle process automation you may you should be able to see these two things like a left side application and the workspace and in the application is the area it's a playground where as a developer you create the applications and once application is activated you can test in the workspace so we'll just try to check out all these things from the in a live demo so first thing what i'll do is i'll try to show you an existing demo so now assume that i have logged into my opa and if i click on applications it shows a list of applications which are already there in my uh what you call login so i'll just try to log in again yeah so this is the first thing it will ask you yes that is already logged in now in the application it shows a list of processes which are already available in the application it will have a list of applications right now this is my expense application so i'll just click on the expense application now in the expense application you may have all these things you may have processes uis decisions connectors and types and roles now in this particular expense application if you can see here i have only one process right yes let me better log in and log out i'll just try to log in better yeah this is the login so this is how you generally log into the opa and click on expense application which is already there i'll click on processes and now in this process we have something called expense structure process i'll just click on this one if you observe the navigation flow of this one so what is expected here is there are two roles here one is process user and other one is expense management approval so now in this one the event is getting started from here and when the user enters the data and clicks on submit it goes to it goes to this particular user called expense manager approver like nothing to, nothing but you can consider this as a role and it is this approval is sent to all the people who are having that particular approval role and either rejection or approval what will happen is it will send a notification to the user who has submitted the expense report and then it will get end so this is a sample a structured process which we have designed what we do is we'll try to test it okay so to test this one what you do click on this application now click on workspace so here it shows a list of applications which are already available so i'll just go with expense approval request so here i'll just enter the data and now i'll just mention some expense approval amount and click on submit so once you click on submit it sends a process it generates a process instance you can also check the status of it right and yeah so it shows the audit you can observe here to whom it is pending with available for expense management approval to be required right so this expense expense manager approval there are a couple of users which are assigned to this role and those users should open this request and they should be able to approve it so let's say i'll just log in with another user called curtis so here i'll click on you can just click on tracking and they should be able to see the latest one which was submitted and you can just click on this one and here just click on open once you click on open it has the information about approve or reject once you click on approve or reject this response will be updated for that particular process and you can see the status is completed now you can also observe here let us i'll close here and from the user point of view the john derber who submitted the request right i'll just click on tracking and yeah just refresh here it should be completed now yes it got completed you can see here it is completed and you can see the audit who like uh, who submitted it like uh, who approved it you can see here okay so this is a very sample application which we have designed and what we do now is we'll just try to design a similar one from the scratch so the first thing what you do is you just navigate to the process designer we call it as in the application just click on create and it is yeah yeah you just start from here click on application and you can click on create now this this first step what you do is you create a process application right so i'll say
leave application okay i'll just say leave request application now what we are doing we're creating an application and now when the application is created just open the application now in this application you have to create all these remaining components which are required and now generally what we do is as we want to submit a leave request we want to enter our name and we want to enter the number of days also right so for that you require a ui so what you do is the first thing what you do can do is you just click on ui and here you have an option here click on web form and let's say leave request form and click on create so this generates a web form wherein we can mention when we can mention the list of details so i just clicked on the web form and here yeah so you can just see the list of things here and to have a formatted way i'll just select with this section and now what we do is i'll just try to enter input text let's say username and maybe the number of days right yeah that's it two fields i just prefer now here just mention username and now then the next one is number of days okay so this form is done then click on the app now so we'll just create a process now click on the process now go with the structured process so let's say i'll name it as leave request structured process and click on create so it will create a start and an end event so generally whenever it gets created you can simply click on open now or maybe you can click on this particular link also now the structured process got open so here what we have to do is we want to send the request right so just click on the start event first in the start event if you observe showing an error right so first thing is just finished off the start event functionality click on this open properties and now mention the mandatory parameters here so here just scroll down it says enter the title so i'll just say leave request and it is asking what is the ui so we'll select the leave request form frm yeah and if at all if you want to end, mention the instance you can select the leave request form arguments dot the username right so it's almost done next thing is now here if you observe by default whatever the components you have here it will ask you to mention which under which role this particular component should be executed so what we can do is so now let us say so for our manage for the leave request it has to be approved by manager right so what we do is we'll click on the roles and by default we have a process user we'll just try to create one more role so let's say i'll click on this leave request app click on roles and here you can just click on add yeah i'll say new i'll say manager leave request approval approver right so i'll just add a user here I'll just add application user called Curtis. Okay, now we can go back to the leave request app. And click on the process. Now we are back to the process now. So here what we do is you can just click on approve right so approval just drag and drop into the second place second swing link so let's say right and here on this one just click on this on the first area first swim lane click on this blue color area click on this pencil icon now change the role to process user and the for the second one you change it to a manage approval user because this leave request right now this task will become a leave request so let's say our leave request approval okay so this is a leave request approval it has to be approved by the manager and you can just check the properties yeah leave request approval and you can select the ui and you can go with the bind to process data so that you can see the data which is submitted by user okay and yeah that's it 
now what we can do is we have to connect now right after start event it should be leave request let's say it will go from the leak request like this yeah just again try click on this icon and just yeah leave it like this and you can just move it so that it will shown properly now once the leave request is approved or rejected what we want to do is we want to send a notification to the user right so then for that purpose what we do is we'll just consider a notification here the notification so this is to the user who submitted the request right so we'll just try to connect like this and from here we'll connect to this notification and similarly from here we'll connect to the end event and now just check the errors here on the notification check the properties here click on open properties and see the errors so to whom you need to send the notification it is nothing but to the person who is submitting it right so let us say if they yeah better to capture the information of the user or let us say i'm assuming that it is submitted by john dunbar so what we can do is i'll just search with this user called john dunbar to this person i'll send the notification right and yeah click on this notification check the properties and here you can mention the subject a leave request approval status notification okay and now if at all if it don't if you want to mention this information you can just mention that yeah leave request yeah this is a task outcome object which will have the information about whether the request is approved or rejected okay can mention that now yeah so almost all the properties we have entered you can see the green icon by default just went to green because there are no properties pending on any of these things you can just click on activate and yeah so it will try to weld it again click on activate again now it will generate a snapshot and it tries to activate with a specific version yeah it is almost done you can ignore the warnings as of now and you can see here the success status message it is active the leaves request structure process now what you can do is you can just click on this particular one right process application and you can click on workspace it will open a new tab right like this process and now click on leave request process and enter the username let's say straight up and i'll say 15 days leave and click on submit and now the expectation is it has to be submitted or it has to be approved by user called Curtis. I'll just go to the Curtis user, click on tracking, refresh here. This user should be able to see this particular leave request process which are submitted by John Dunbar. Click on this process and click on open. You should be able to see the list of data which was entered by user. You can see here the data is able to see it and you can just see and click on approve or reject. Once it is done, let us I'll click on approve and you can see the audit trial here and who submitted and who requested and what was the input. You can see all the information here. Now, and notification also you can try to validate, let us say on the administration area with the end user, the one approval user, click on administration and notification and you should be able to see the pro like uh, this like leave request process and this user should be able to receive the notification information also okay so this is how we can try to work on the oracle process automation and uh, we have just discussed very simple process in this particular uh, demo today so in the next coming session we'll try to discuss some more detailed examples thank you